Welcome to Legion Builds, where I guide you on how to bring your favorite characters into Dungeons & Dragons. This video and all my content is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. Thank you all so much. Become a supporter today to vote for the next video release, receive a monthly homebrewed item, and more. It's also dedicated to everyone who subscribes to this channel, and really, I mean that. Without you guys, I wouldn't be doing any of this. Thank you. Today we're bringing former Vladov soldier turned vault hunter, Moe's. No, I will not be saying her full name because damn. Moe's served in the Vladov Ursa Corps, a mechanized infantry division that are trained to pilot Iron Bears, 15 ton battle max. Upon completing the required mission, Moe's contract was up and was now allowed to claim ownership of her personal Iron Bear. But this is not how it worked out. Moe's was manipulated into staying with her unit, eventually leading to a mission that ended with disaster. In the end, Moe's and her Iron Bear were all that was left. Moe's is a battle-hardened veteran of countless engagements. All this before joining the Crimson Raiders to help protect the people of Pandora. Along with her skills with guns, Moe's is an expert mechanic and engineer, owning this to her time after leaving the Ursa Corps and being Iron Bear's sole caretaker. In the end, Moe's trusts her mechanical partner more than those she fights besides, though Zane and Flack probably don't help this. For today's build, we'll be using the Player's Handbook and Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. We're using Standard Point Array to make things easy should you wish to use Point Buy or Roll for Stats. Thankfully, we're not multi-classing, so it's going to be very easy for you. We'll start things off with Intelligence at 15. You're the only person who touches Iron Bear. That means maintenance, modification, and repairs are all on you. If you don't know how to do that, Iron Bear is done. Khan will follow with 14. You have been through hell and back, and you need to be able to take punishment all while remaining focused on the mission. Dex is coming in at 13. Iron Bear may be your main source of damage, but sometimes you just need a good sidearm. Strength will be a 12. Your training has made you ready to fight regardless of the weapon. Wisdom will be low with 10. You failed a pretty important insight check and we're dumping Charisma. You've spent a lot of time with only Iron Bear, but on Pandora, does Charisma really matter? Moe's is a human. Baron Human grants you a free feat and skill with your stat improvements. Place plus one into dex and intelligence. For your free skill, Crossbow Expert allows you to ignore loading properties with any crossbow you are proficient with, being within five feet of an enemy does not impose disadvantage on range attacks, and you can fire a hand crossbow as a bonus action after making an attack. Now we're going with this instead of Gunner because, well, the Dungeon Master Guide is the only source of guns in D&D officially and those guns suck. Unless you go with modern, then they're a little bit better. Now, if you use better guns, like those found in Kobold Press's Tome of Heroes, change this out for Gunner, it basically does the same thing, except it adds plus one to dex. For your free skill, grab Athletics. Okay, for background, we're going to need the skills Investigation and Medicine. We'll need to focus on your combat skills and mechanics, so we have just the perfect class for it. Level 1 Artificer, found in Tasha's, starts off with two skills. Take Arcana and Perception. Magical Tinkering gives you the ability to imbue tiny non-magical objects with effects, such as allowing it to shed light, project a static image, emit an odor, or deliver a recorded message. You can use your action to do this a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier. Spellcaster grants you the ability ability to cast spells. At the end of each long rest, you can prepare a total number of spells equal to your intelligence modifier plus half your artificer level. You're going to start off with two cantrips and four spells. For these spells, Firebolt launches a small missile that deals 1d10 fire damage on contact. Mending lets you repair a break or tear in an object you touch that is no larger than one foot in any dimension. Cure Wounds lets you heal 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier. Featherfall stops all fall damage on up to five creatures within 60 feet. Alarm creates a 20-foot cube within 30 feet. When you cast this spell, you can choose who can pass through or enter the cube. If someone who isn't designated passes into the cube, you are automatically alerted. Even if you are asleep, this wakes you up. You can even add a loud noise to signal the trespass. Use this to set up a safe zone for long rest. Catapult gives you a rail gun. Now choosing an object that weighs up to 5 pounds within 60 feet of you, you launch the object with some serious is force. The object travels 90 feet in a straight line and is destroyed when it collides with something. If it collides with a creature, they must now make a deck save or take 3d8 bludgeoning damage. 
Level 2 Artificer now have infused items. You can now turn non-magical items into magical ones. On the Artificer level chart, you will see two things, infusions known and infused items. At this level, you know four infusions, but you can only have two infused items active. If you infuse more than two, you will lose the oldest infusion. Now, you will always know the infusions, but regardless, you can only have half activated. For this entire build, you will only need four infused items. That's it. But by the end of this build, you can have six infusions active out of 12 known. Also, any item you infuse counts as a spell casting focus for you. For your infusions, enhanced weapon grants plus one to attack and damage to one weapon. Enhanced defense adds plus one to a shield or armor. Replicate magic item gives you a storage deck with bag of holding, which allows allows you to store up to 500 pounds within 64 cubic feet. Repeating Shot turns one ranged weapon with the ammunition property into a magic weapon. Once in tune to this weapon, it adds plus one to attack and damage and will automatically create magical ammunition without the need to load. Level 3 Artificers receive their subclass, and it's time to get Iron Bear. Well, actually, it's time to get Iron Cub, which is just Iron Bear shrunk down. Battlesmith, also found in Tasha's, grants you Battle Ready. You now have proficiency in all martial weapons. And when you attack with a magical weapon, you can now use your intelligence for attack and damage. Steel Defender creates a metal friend for you to go into battle with. The Steel Defender assumes the form of your choosing and is a size medium. It has an AC of 15 and has an HP equal to 2 plus your intelligence modifier plus 5 times your artificer level. Using your bonus action, Iron Cub can attack with a melee strike that deals 1d8 plus your proficiency bonus on a hit. It can even heal itself or you can heal it by using the spell Mending, which will give it back 2d6. It can also use its reaction to deflect attack. When Iron Cub sees another creature attacked within 5 feet of it, it can impose disadvantage to the attack. Battlesmith spells grant you additional spells at certain levels and are always prepared and don't count towards your total prepared spells. For these Battlesmith spells, Shield grants 5 plus to your AC as a reaction. Heroism grants temporary HP to a willing creature you touch for one minute while you maintain this spell. The temp HP equals your intelligence modifier and it gains this temp HP at the start of each of its turns while it's active. While active, the creature is also immune to the frightened condition. Right Tools for the job allows you to magically create a set of artisan tools of your choice. Level 4 Artificers earn our first ability score improvement. Bump up intelligence for better spell attack and DC. You can also now prepare 6 spells per long rest. Level 5 Battlesmith Artificers gain extra attack. You can now attack twice with a single attack action. You also gain access to second level spells. For your Battlesmith spells, Branding Smite imbues a weapon with E-Tech bullets. After casting the spell with a bonus action, the next attack you deal adds an extra 2d6 radiant damage. A creature hit with this attack will begin to glow and will become visible if it is invisible for one minute while you maintain the spell. Warding Bond creates a connection between you and a willing creature you touch. For one hour, while this creature is within 60 feet of you, it gains plus one to AC and saving throws, and has resistance to all damage. But when it takes damage, so do you. The spell ends if you or the creature drops to zero, or if you are separated more than 60 feet. You can only bond to one creature at a time. For your new normal spell, it's time for Iron Cub to become Iron Bear. Prepare the spell, enlarge, reduce. For one minute, one creature you choose within 30 feet of you can now be enlarged by one size or reduced by one size. When you enlarge Iron Bear, it will now become a size large and have advantage on all strength saves and checks. On top of this, it will also deal an extra 1d4 damage when it attacks. You must maintain this spell for one minute. If you instead reduce a creature, they must make a con save if they are unwilling and will have a disadvantage on all strength checks and saving throws, and all attacks are reduced by 1d4 as it becomes a size smaller. Your character level 5, Firebolt, now does 2d10 fire damage. 
Level six artificers now have tool expertise. When you use a tool that you're proficient with, you double the proficiency bonus. You also now gain two more infusions that you can know, bringing your total to three that can be active at once. Finally, you can prepare seven spells per long rest. Level 7 Artificers receive Flash of Genius. Now when you or another creature you see within 30 feet makes a skill check or saving throw, you can use your reaction to add your intelligence modifier to the roll. You can do this a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier per long rest. Level 8 Artificers earn another ability score improvement. Let's max out intelligence for better spell attack DC, and you can now prepare a total of 9 spells per long rest. Level 9 Battlesmith Artificers gain Arcane Jolt. Now when you hit a creature with a magic weapon, or when Iron Bear hits with an attack, you can activate one of two effects. You can deal an extra 2d6 force damage, or heal one creature within 30 feet of the creature you hit that you can see, restoring 2d6 hit points. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier between long rest. You also gain access to third level spells. For your Battlesmith spells, Aurora of Vitality creates a 30-foot radius field around you for one minute while you maintain the spell. Until the field ends, you can use a bonus action to heal one creature inside the field, including you, 2d6 hit points. Conjure Barrage gives you an automatic weapon. When you fire a piece of non-magical ammunition, a 60-foot cone is created. Everyone within the cone must make a dex save or take 3d8 of the ammunition's damage type. Level 10 Artificers are Magic Item Adepts. You can now attune to four magic items, not three, and you can craft common and uncommon magic items faster and cheaper. You also bring your total infusions known to eight and can now have four active. Enhanced Weapon and Enhanced Defense are now upgraded now adding plus two to the infused items. You can now have 10 spells prepared per long rest. For your new cantrip, Acid Splash creates a corrosive grenade. Targeting one creature within 60 feet, or two if they're standing next to each other, you force a dex save. Should they fail, they take 2d6 acid damage. Level 11 Artificers receive Spell Storing Item. You can now store one spell within a weapon or spellcasting focus at the end of a long rest, as long as they are a first or second level Artificer spell that has a casting time of one action, such as Cure Wounds or Enlarge Reduce. While holding an object, a creature can cast the spell using your Intelligence modifier, and if it requires concentration, they must be the one to maintain this. This spell stays with the object and can be used a number of times equal to twice your Intelligence modifier which means it can be used 10 times. You can only have one spell storing item at a time. You are now character level 11. Firebolt now does 3d10 fire damage and Acid Splash does 3d6 acid damage. Level 12 Artificers earn another ability score improvement. Place this into con for better health and focus. You can now prepare a total of 11 spells per long rest. Level 13 Artificers gain 4th level spells. For your Battlesmith spells, for your Battlesmith spells, Aurora of Purity emits a 30 foot radius field around you for 10 minutes while you maintain the spell. Until the field ends, each non-hostile creature within the field, including you, has resistance to poison damage and has advantage on saving throws that cause the following condition. Blindness, Charmed, Frightened, Paralyzed, Poisoned, and Stunned. Fire Shield creates a Fire Spike or Ice Spike shield around you. When you cast this spell when you choose its form, warm or chilled, granting certain effects for 10 minutes without being maintained. A warm shield grants you resistance to cold damage and deals 2d8 fire damage to a creature that hits you with a melee attack that is within 5 feet of you. Chilled shield grants you resistance to fire damage and deals 2d8 cold damage to a creature that hits you with a melee attack that is within 5 feet of you. Time for an even better shield. Prepare the spell Udaluk's Resilient Sphere. For one minute while you maintain this spell, a force field is created around a creature that is within 30 feet of you that is a size large or smaller. Nothing can pass through the sphere and the creature inside can now not be damaged or suffer any effects from outside the field. They can also not leave the field or damage anything outside of it. A creature inside can use its action to move the weightless field as if it's inside of an orb. Warning about this part though, if a creature outside the field is actually large enough, they can pick up the 
the field with the creature inside. The only way to destroy this field is with the spell Disintegrate. Level 14 Artificers are now Magic Item Savants. You can attune up to 5 items at once and can ignore all requirements for attunement a Magic Item can have. You now have 10 Infusions known and 5 active. You can now prepare 12 spells per long rest. For your new cantrip, Ray of Frost creates an Ice Grenade. You can now throw this grenade at one creature within 60 feet, dealing 3d8 cold damage on impact and reducing its speed by 10 feet until the start of your next turn. Turn. Level 15 Battlesmith Artificers now have improved Defender. Now your Arcane Jolt does 4d6 damage or 4d6 healing, Iron Bear's AC is now 17, and now when Iron Bear uses its Deflect Attack reaction, the attacker will now take 1d4 plus your Intelligence modifier in Force Damage. Level 16 Artificers earn another ability score improvement. Let's bump up Khan again. You can now prepare a total of 13 spells per long rest. Level 17 Artificers gain 5th level spells. For your Battlesmith spells, Banishing Smite empowers your shots with a bonus action for 5d10 force damage on a hit. When you hit with this weapon attack and the creature is reduced to 50 hit points or lower, you banish it. If the target hit is from another plane of existence, they return to their home plane. If not, for one minute while you maintain this spell, they are held in a small pocket dimension until the spell ends. Mass Cure Wounds creates a 30 foot radius sphere centered out to 60 feet away from you. Up to 6 creatures of your choosing inside the sphere, which can include you, regain 3d8 plus your intelligence modifier in hit points. For your normal spell, prepare Greater Restoration. You can now touch one creature and produce one effect. That effect can be reducing their exhaustion level by one, and one effect that is charming them or petrifying them, ending one curse, ending a stat reduction, or ending an HP max reduction. Your character level 17 now, Firebolt, Acid Splash, and Ray of Frost now do four damage dice each. Level 18 Artificers are now Magic Item Masters, allowing you to attune to 6 Magic Items. This goes great with the fact that now you know 12 Infusions and can have 6 active at once. You can also now prepare 14 spells per long rest. Level 19 Artificers earn our final Ability Score Improvement, Cap Off Con for amazing health and focus on your concentration spells. Remember, health stacks retroactively over the build. Our final level is level 20 Artificer and you receive Soul of the Artificer. Now all your saving throws are improved by one for each attuned magic item. And if you are reduced to zero HP but not killed outright, you can use your reaction to end one of your infusions to drop to one instead. To end it all, you can now prepare a total of 15 spells per long rest. Now that we've hit level 20, let's recap. Your stats are Strength 12, Dex 14, Con 20, Intelligence 20, Wisdom 10, Charisma 8. Let's dive in. You are one hell of a soldier. You can use your intelligence to attack and cause damage, increase your shots damage freely, add extra damage and effects to those shots. This means a standard crossbow is dealing 1d8 plus 5 plus 4d6 magical damage with a single shot and can add 2d6 or 5d10 to it. Using non-magical ammunition, you can unleash a devastating attack dealing 3d8 damage on a failed deck save with a DC of 19. Iron Bear is also great and is always there for you. They have an AC of 17, have 107 HP, and can deal 1d8 plus 6 damage, deflect attacks, and cause 1d4 plus 5 damage, and can grow to a size large. You also have useful abilities that can heal, stop falling damage, end bad effects, set up safe zones for long rest, create force fields, and you have an HP of over 200 taking the average downside. You have really bad charisma and a lot of concentration spells. That's it. This is actually a pretty good build. You always do magical damage and can keep yourself up and safe and you're never alone. But you know, while Iron Bear is always there for you, they can never really be there for you. So go make friends and save the galaxy. Just be ready for some of those friends to sacrifice themselves like the heroes they are and basically break your heart. Seriously, my partner's still crying over what happened in Borderlands 3. 
Thank you for joining me today. I release a new build each week on YouTube and Spotify, so make sure to like and subscribe to not miss a single new build. Over on Patreon right now, you can help choose next week's build by becoming a supporter. Who will it be? Will it be Greed from Full Metal Alchemist, Medusa from Soul Eater, Lil Slugger from Paranoia Agent, or Shishio from Roni Kenshin? 